Today on the Matt Wall Show, it is now accepted as dogma that gender is a social construct and men and women can change their genders. We're going to explore the origins of this theory and reveal the truth about the degenerate quack who came up with it. You need to hear this, so stick around for it. Also, five headlines, including the dastardly conspiracy that caused Nancy Pelosi to break the lockdown rules by getting her hair done at a salon. She's the victim here, okay? In our daily cancellation, speaking of victims, we're going to talk about yet another rich celebrity who, it turns out, is being racially oppressed. All of that on the way. Before we get to any of it, I really want to tell you about our friends, Charity Mobile. Listen, it can be very difficult to find companies that provide a great service, but also share your values. You know, as conservatives, this is an issue we grapple with every day. Well, let me tell you one company I support and you should support too, because they support the causes we believe in. And that is Charity Mobile, uh, the pro-life phone company. That's what they're called for good reason, because with Charity Mobile, it's pretty simple. 5% of your monthly plan uh, goes to the pro-life, pro-family charity of your choice. You get to choose. So um, not only is this a company with values you share, share, but by simply paying your phone bill, you'll be able to uh, actively support the pro-life cause. And there are a lot of other great perks, too. Um, new activations and eligible accounts get a free cell phone with free activation and free shipping. Plus, uh, I love this, no contracts, no termination fees, no risk with a 30-day guarantee. If you have an issue, well, they've got live customer service on call, ready to help, and uh, they're based in the USA as well. So to me, this is the ultimate sort of win-win. You get a great service, you support a great cause, and if we want to have companies out there that are aligned with us and what we believe, then we've got to support them when we find them, which isn't hard in this case because Charity Mobile is simply a wonderful service, as simple as that. Uh, call Charity Mobile at one 877 474-3662 or chat with them online at charitymobile.com. That's charitymobile.com. All right. Now, it's taken as self-evident these days that something called gender exists and that it is distinct from biological sex and that the former and perhaps even the latter, they tell us now, is an artificial social construct. But these ideas were not always self-evident. In fact, they weren't evident at all for the entire history of the human race up until about a century ago, thousands of generations lived and died, engaged in art and science and philosophy and everything else that comprises human civilization, all while assuming that there were only males and females and rarely finding any need for other categories. In the 20th century, that all changed. Considering the magnitude and suddenness of this shift in our understanding of human nature, we should probably take the time to acquaint ourselves with the people responsible for it. And when it comes to the concept of gender and gender constructs, there is no better place to start than a guy by the name of Dr. John Money. Uh, he's a prominent, was a prominent psychologist and sexologist. Money was one of the early pioneers of the gender theories that are currently taught in grade schools and universities. Um, among the first to, to take the word gender out of the realm of grammar, which is where it originates, and apply it to people, he coined the terms gender role, gender identity, sexual orientation. All of that is from him. A professor at York University recently published a book labeling John Money the man who invented gender. So suffice it to say, he, he was an extremely influential man, and anyone who propagates left-wing gender theory today is parroting at least some of the ideas of John Money, whether they know it or not. And most of the time, they don't. But that fact uh, that they're parroting his ideas ought to trouble gender theory proponents because John Money was, among other things, a fraud, a quack, and an abuser. Along with more conventionally degenerate views, his, open, his advocacy of open marriages and group sex, for example, Money was also, as a not very critical article in Salon puts it, ambivalently supportive of pedophilia. Now, drawing a distinction between what he called sadistic pedophilia and affectional pedophilia, Money held that a relationship between a grown man and a child who really love each other should not be considered disordered. Speaking to a Dutch, uh, a Dutch publication, a pro-pedophilia publication, Money explained, quote, If I were to see the case of a boy aged 10 or 12 who, who's intensely attracted towards a man in his 20s or 30s, if the relationship is totally mutual and the bonding is genuinely totally mutual, then I would not call it pathological in any way. His tolerance for child rape may help explain some of the events that transpire later in the story. Um, jumping ahead now to 1965 and the birth of twins Bruce and Brian Raymer. The boys are born healthy except for a condition called phimosis, which affects the foreskin. It was decided incorrectly, it turns out, that the best way to treat this condition was circumcision. 
But Bruce's procedure went horribly wrong, and his penis was essentially burned off of his body. After several months of grasping for answers, Bruce's parents eventually decided uh, to take him to Johns Hopkins in Baltimore to see the renowned Dr. John Money. The good doctor, eager to prove the legitimacy of his theory that gender is a product of environment and culture, recommended that Bruce undergo sex reassignment surgery as a baby. Um, and before the boy turned two, the deed had been done. His testicles were removed. Some crude approximation of female genitalia were formed. And Money instructed the parents to raise him as a girl from that day forward, never tell him about his real identity. So the Reimer parents tried to follow Money's advice, but they found that Bruce was still Bruce, even if they called him Brenda and did everything in their power to preserve his fragile and false female identity. Gender is a construct, they were told. Why should a boy raised as a girl still have boyish tendencies? Yet, his boyishness came through in spite of Money's theories. The boys also attended regular therapy sessions with Money. Uh, for quote-unquote therapy, Money sometimes instructed the boys to disrobe and inspect each other's genitals. Sometimes they were made to simulate sex acts on each other. Money explained that this uh, was meant to be healthy sexual exploration. On at least one occasion, nude photographs of the boys were taken. Ultimately, Money was convinced that you know, his project had been a smashing success, and he bragged of his triumphs in many published works. It was not a success. The female identity never took hold for Bruce, because he wasn't a female. He was confused and miserable. He was on the verge of suicide at the age of 13. Finally, his mother told him the truth. When Bruce heard about this, he chose immediately to trans transition back to a boy. He took the name of David. Uh, he underwent another reassignment surgery, this time to try and reclaim his true self. And he felt better for a time. But um, neither he nor his twi twin brother lived happily ever after. Their experience as John Money's lab rats had damaged them irrevocably. David would go on to speak out against Money at first anonymously and then publicly. His brother did too. Eventually, David even got married, but all was not well. The first twin to kill himself was Brian in 2002 at the age of 36. The brother who was used as a control group in Money's human experiment took a lethal dose of antidepressants. Two years later, David drove to a grocery store parking lot with a sawed-off shotgun, shot himself in the head. Their deaths will go down in history as suicides, but they were both murdered by John Money, the father of modern gender theory. I wish that this was all just a bit of tragic and disturbing historical trivia. Unfortunately, though, John Money's experiment, although it was a catastrophic failure and his theories were dramatically disconfirmed, he still achieved a victory on the cultural battlefield. Today, ideas first proposed by a man who thought child rape could be loving and who performed a years-long sexually abusive experiment on two unwilling children who later went on to kill themselves are taken as gospel truth, and to question them is heresy. The Raymer twins were the first victims of money's quackery, but certainly not the last. In recent years, there's been an explosive rise in gender confusion among children. Kids are drugged and sometimes mutilated, all in accordance with a theory that was proven false by the guy who came up with it. Money's modern disciples are just as dishonest as Money himself was, though, so they push this sex reassignment stuff and other barbarities while claiming that the science proves the efficacy of these measures. It doesn't. They're lying. The most extensive and legitimate research done on the subject has found that transgenders still have sky-high suicide rates even decades after their surgeries. This is no surprise. As David Raymer's parents discovered, you cannot reassign someone's genetically and biologically hardwired sex. You can dress them in different clothes, you can chop off body parts, but none of that can change their DNA. You can alter the way a person looks, you cannot alter their biological nature. You cannot change who they are. John Money's experiment failed. The experiment that our society has been carrying out on our children ever since has also failed. In its infancy, gender theory wrought only confusion, despair, and death. As it grows, the results have not changed. They've only become more widespread. Yet, we continue down along this path, pretending not to notice the carnage. I think we need to start noticing it. Let's get to five headlines.
You know, as part of our Daily Wire audience, there are a number of ways to get uh, to take in the podcast. You can listen on Apple Podcasts. You can go to Spotify. You can go to another podcast app. You can also watch our podcast on YouTube and Facebook over at dailywire.com. Bottom line, our content is available in a lot of places, and there's no excuse not to watch it. I mean, that's why it personally offends me. If you miss an episode, if you don't watch, it hurts me deeply on a personal level. And, uh, of course, needless to say, I am oppressed. Um, every person who does not watch this show is oppressing me. So I'm being oppressed by, you know, billions of people. And now uh, we're introducing a new upgraded experience, though. Daily Wire is now on Apple TV and Roku, so members can enjoy all of the visual elements on this podcast on your big screen, either live or on demand. Find the Daily Wire app on Apple TV or Roku and download today. Go to dailywire.com slash Walsh. Use code WATCH at checkout to get 15% off your memberships. One five percent off your membership deals. Uh, it's not. It's not gonna. It's not gonna last long. So you got to go now, and uh, you can watch Apple TV or Roku. All you know, just just more opportunities to avoid uh, oppressing me. That's really the headline here. Okay, now number one, huge news here. Nancy Pelosi is the victim of a setup, a sting operation, a ruse. Probably the Russians are behind it. We can assume. There was, there was some kind of vast conspiracy afoot, and the result of the conspiracy is that Nancy Pelosi got her hair done. As we discussed yesterday, Pelosi was caught uh, you know, getting her hair done inside a San Francisco salon, which is illegal, according to the lockdown, you know, the lockdown that she supports and has insisted upon, but she went in, nobody else can, but she did, she went in and got a blowout. A blowout, which apparently I'm told is the same thing as a blow dry. Now, why do we call it a blow out if it's just a blow dry? Why do you need to go to a salon and pay someone to use a hair dryer? Can't you do it yourself? These are all questions that still are left unanswered. Um, and also, you know, how is it that Nancy Pelosi even still has hair at the age of 732? Another, there's a lot of mysteries here that are, that are, that are going on. Um, but she went in nonetheless, and she got her, her hair done. Now, the, the assumption from a lot of people no doubt many of them probably sexist. The assumption is that Nancy Pelosi did something wrong, you know, by defying the lockdown orders, uh, assuming that the laws didn't apply to her and so on. Well, she was asked about this uh, during a press conference, and she explained that no, 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 no. She is the real victim here. Listen. I take responsibility for trusting uh, the word of a neighborhood salon that I've been to over the years many times. And that um, when they said, well, we're able to accommodate people one person at a time and that we can set up that time, I trusted that. As it turns out, it was a setup. So I take responsibility for falling for a setup. And that's all I'm going to say on that. I take responsibility for the fact that I am not responsible. I take responsibility for being a, tr a trusting, kind faultless angel who was exploited by nefarious hairstylists who in their free time, I have learned, just so you know, do in fact drown kittens for fun and cannibalize the elderly. I'm just lucky to have escaped with my life. Uh, and plus my hair looks gorgeous, you have to admit. That's just to summarize what she just said there. Uh, in other words, she's, you know, all joking aside, a horrible human being. I guess that's, that's how we can con conclude this. Let's go to number two. Uh, checking in with the gaffe machine, Joe Biden. Here's his latest, what they're calling a quote-unquote gaffe. Listen. Ahead of your trip to Kenosha, Wisconsin tomorrow, uh, last week your running mate, Senator Harris, said that uh, the officer who shot Jacob Blake, based on what she has seen, should be charged. Do you agree with her, and do you also believe the same for the officers who were involved in the death of Breonna Taylor? I think we should let the, uh, the judicial system work its way. I do think there's a minimum need to be charged, the officers, and as well, well as Breonna Taylor. And uh, I might add, by the way, I think uh, what happened in, uh, uh, in uh, Portland, where a, one of the Trump guys riding along in vans inciting response is shooting rubber bullets, I guess, or paintballs. Apparently, there was someone shot by someone in the crowd with a bullet killed. I think that person should meet the legal requirements of whatever that calls for. We should be investigated, and it should follow through on what needs to be done. Let the judicial system work. Let's make sure justice is done. So the gaffe is supposed to be that Joe Biden said Breonna Taylor needs to be charged. That's what he said there. 
Um, but, but that's not really the point. Uh, the, the point is that Joe Biden is calling for charges of officers who, according to all of the evidence we have seen, acted appropriately um, to preserve the lives of innocent people, not just themselves, but the other people around, the kids in the car, that the knife-wielding, violent, accused uh, domestic abuser and rapist was trying to get into to evade arrest. They also act to protect them. That's all the evidence we have. But Biden, because he's not a good person, and he's a coward and a fraud and a weak man, has no problem throwing the officers to the wolves to score points politically. I mean, think about this. This guy is 78 years old, at the tail end of his life, one way or another. Okay, he's 78. Um, and th this is what he wants his final chapter to be. Appeasing a violent mob, taking the side of criminals against cops, throwing innocent men to the wolves, all in pursuit of a position of power that he's barely conscious enough even to appreciate. Sad, pathetic, disgraceful. But, you know, all that aside, uh, we did learn during the convention that he likes vanilla ice cream with sprinkles. So he's got that going for him, at least. Number three, let's go to some uplifting and happy news today from the Daily Wire. Um, a so-called Antifa commander who reportedly was armed, dropped to the ground and began crying in the fetal position when law enforcement officers stopped him at a riot and placed him under arrest. Uh, you know, this, this is something, something, a little, something to lift our spirits a little bit. This is nice. Matthew Banta, 23, was arrested at a riot late last week after he allegedly ignored police commands and has been charged with two counts of felony bail jumping and one count of obstructing an officer. The Green Bay Press Gazette reported, quote, the charges stem from a report about 9 p.m. Saturday that a whole bunch of white people with sticks, baseball bats, and helmets were headed towards the police who were trying to break up what they deemed an unlawful assembly in downtown Green Bay following a protest Saturday afternoon. Uh, so, and you could see the commander there, scary guy, very tough looking. This guy apparently is uh, known for instigating violence all the time. He does that in between his shifts at the T-Mobile kiosk from the looks of it. Of course, I'm joking. There's no way he has a job. These losers don't have jobs. But it goes to show, you know, we call Antifa dangerous, and they are. Only because huge crowds of people with weapons and, and, uh, and guns and bats and no moral compass are always dangerous, right? No matter how pitiful and scrawny they are on an individual level. But that doesn't say that these people individually are, are tough, you know. You can give bats and guns to a bunch of five-year-olds and they would be certainly a danger. Um, most of these Antifa brats individually are just scared, pitiful weaklings. And this is a game to them. All the cosplay conventions are shut down because of COVID. So this is what they're doing instead. And that's why it has to be made real. You arrest them, you put them in prison on real charges, real prison time. And they could see this is not just a game. Okay, number four. The congealed lump of semi-sentient oatmeal currently presiding as mayor of Portland Ted Wheeler is moving away from his $840,000 condo because it's been targeted so often by rioters. Remember, though, there's no violence. No problem in Portland. Everything's fine, says Wheeler, as he speeds away in his moving van in the middle of the night. Um, the story of Ted Wheeler is really a sad one. You know, first of all, as, as already discussed, at some point in his life, a witch put a curse on him and turned him into a lump of oatmeal. So that was his first tough break. And then he's elected mayor, and he does everything in his power to legitimize the rioters, provide cover for them, aid and abet them in their terrorism. He's doing everything he can for them, everything he can. Hands the city over to them and says, here, here you go. Burn it to the ground. Do what you want. And they still hate him. <laughs> they still hate him, even after all of that. Uh, yeah, and I'm sure he's thinking to himself, what, can I, what else can I do for you people? And the answer is, not, it's never enough. Ted, that's the answer. Maybe you've seen that by now. Number five, and in our most important story of the day, uh, David Blaine floated away in a balloon and was never seen again. Actually, I'm not sure if that happened. I didn't watch. Did anybody watch? David Blaine did his balloon stunt yesterday. I feel like nobody watches. I didn't see anything about it online. Nobody was talking about it. The guy makes, you know, he goes out in the middle of the desert with a balloon and floats away and just nobody cares or is watching. 
Somebody looks out their window and says, oh, is that David Blaine? Oh, well, all right. That gets back to what they were doing. Um, they live streamed it. YouTube live streamed David Blaine floating on balloons. On, uh, and uh, it was like a three-hour live stream. I, I mean, did would anyone sit there for three hours and watch a guy floating on a balloon? I don't know. Now, they called this stunt Ascension. That's what they called it. And at first, when I heard that Blaine was going to do a stunt called Ascension, I thought, okay, well, you know, this is going to be a trick where he uh, flies and, and nobody can figure out how he's doing it. You know, something like that. That's what. It's really what I thought it would be. And I thought, well, that, that's pretty cool. Uh, but then I learned, no, he's just floating with balloons. How is that? Why is that impressive? Humans have been floating on balloons since like the 1700s. The first, the first hot air balloon flight was in the 1700s. This dude is 300 years late with this trick. What's, is he going to invent the wheel next? Is he going to ride down the street in a bicycle? Behold, as he rides his huffy down the street. I don't know. I feel like this had to be the backup stunt. This had, there must have been something else they wanted to do that was really cool, and they couldn't do it. And so at the last minute, they said, well, you know, you could uh, float with balloons. And they just decided to do that. But anyway, congrats to David Blaine for floating. I hope that uh, he made it down safely. All right, let's get to our daily cancellation. Today for our daily cancellation, we're going to be canceling Disney. Uh, there are many reasons why you might think we could cancel Disney. You could cancel them for pretty much every movie they've released for the past 25 years or so because they've all been bad. But today we're canceling them for a different reason, for being racist and oppressive. Uh, the details of Disney's persecution of minorities are difficult to stomach, but we must not avert our gaze. We must not look away. This is real. This is happening. Face it. The Daily Wire has the report. Actor John Boyega who played the character Finn in the Disney uh, Star Wars saga, denounced the film's producers for allegedly sidelining all the minority characters and giving all the white characters more nuanced storylines. Speaking to British GQ, Boyega said that uh, his advice for Disney going forward would be to not market a, quote, black character who they eventually sideline. He said, quote, you get yourself involved in projects and you're not necessarily going to like everything. Uh, this is reported by the Los Angeles Times. But, quote, what I would say to Disney is do not bring out a black character, market them to be much more important in the franchise than they are, and then have them pushed to the sideline. It's not good. I'll say it straight up. Boyega charged that Disney, quote, knew what to do with Daisy Ridley and Adam Driver's character while not having a clue what to do with Oscar Isaac, Oscar Isaac uh, Kelly Tran or himself. Uh, he said, quote, like, you guys knew what to do with Daisy Ridley. You knew what to do with Adam Driver. Uh, you knew what to do with these other people. But when it came to Kelly Marie Tran uh, or when it came to John Boyega, you knew F all. So what do you want me to say? What, what, what they want you to say is I enjoyed being a part of it. It was a great experience. Nah, nah, I'll, I'll take that deal when it's a great experience. They gave all the nuance to Adam Driver, all the nuance to Daisy Ridley. Let's be honest. Daisy knows this. Adam knows this. Everybody knows this. I'm not exposing anything. Uh, Boyega opened up about the racism he experienced from the Star Wars fan base as well, which was uh, at its hottest when the trailer for The Force Awakens was first released. And uh, he continued in his complaints, uh, it makes you angry with a process like that. It makes you much more militant. It changes you because you realize uh, I got given this opportunity, but I'm in an industry that wasn't even ready for me. Nobody else in the cast had people saying that they were going to boycott the movie. Uh, because of uh, because they were in it. Okay, there it is. Uh, sorry, I you know stumbling a little bit there. I could barely finish reading it through the tears. John Boyega, Hollywood actor, worth millions, has suffered in ways that you simply cannot fathom. Now you might listen to his complaints and say, first of all, the reason the black actors in the Star Wars movie didn't have nuanced roles is that nobody in Star Wars had nuanced roles because they were bad, stupid films, horribly written, and existed only as elaborate toy commercials. You might also say that Disney prioritized wokeness over storyline in Star Wars and in everything else they produce these days. You might point out that, I mean, they're literally reshooting their old movies and recasting the white characters as black. I mean, you might say, what more do you want them to do? You might, you might say also that John Boyega is just, frankly, not a very interesting or good actor, and he's lucky to have been given any role at all. I mean, the plumber who came to fix my toilet last week could have probably done a more compelling job in that role than him, you might say. So the fact that he's made millions from a role that he brought nothing to 
should just cause him to be grateful. The way that I'm grateful that you all watch this show, despite the fact that I also have no talent. You might also say, finally, that if Disney sidelined John Boyega at all, it was mostly because they were determined to turn Star Wars into a girl power movie. And that's why all of the male protagonists were sidelined. Even freaking Luke Skywalker was in the move, all three movies. He was, in, he was in them for a total of about 22 seconds because they were more focused on, you know, being gender woke than racial woke. And so if John Boyega has any complaint, that should be the complaint, you might say, if you are a racist. If you're not a racist, you realize that John Boyega now joins the ranks of Michelle Obama, LeBron James, Oprah Winfrey, as celebrities who are rich, admired, and oppressed. And if you are a white person living in a two-bedroom rancher, taking your 12-year-old Ford Escort to your $37,000 a year job at the local Walmart distribution center, you simply cannot understand the oppression and, perse and persecution of celebrities who live in homes as big as the warehouse you work in and who get paid more in a year than you'll make in a lifetime. You will never know their struggle as much as you'd like to because their struggles certainly seem more glamorous and profitable than your own. So Disney is canceled for oppressing the people that it pays millions of dollars to. And you are canceled for daring to assume that a person is not oppressed just because they're rich, famous, powerful, and free. How dare you? How dare all of you? Prayers up for John Boyega in this difficult time. Moment of silence. And that's it for the day. Thanks for watching, everybody. Thanks for listening. Godspeed. The Matt Wall Show is produced by Sean Hampton, executive producer Jeremy Boring. Our supervising producers are Mathis Glover and Robert Sterling. Our technical producer is Austin Stevens, edited by Danny D'Amico, and our audio is mixed by Robin Fenderson. The Matt Wall Show is a Daily Wire production, copyright Daily Wire 2020. Hey everybody, it's Andrew Claven, host of The Andrew Claven Show. You know, some people are depressed because the American Republic is collapsing, the end of days is approaching, and the moon has turned to blood. But on The Andrew Claven Show, that's where the fun just gets started. So come on over to The Andrew Claven Show and laugh your way through the apocalypse with me, Andrew Claven. <laughs>